Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name's Bob, I'll be your host. Space is a really big place. There are more stars than we can count, and who knows how many planets out there. Space is usually a default setting for science fiction stories, even though there are many different types of ways you can tell sci-fi stories. The first and most famous being space opera, which is spaceships traveling from fantastic place to fantastic place and fighting amongst the stars. Star Wars is a very good example of space fan space opera. You have cyberpunk, which is basically <laughs> not too distant future where people have all kinds of cybernetics and stuff. Good examples of this would be actually the cyberpunk game and Shadowrun would fall into this, even though Shadowrun has fantasy elements in it, so it could be considered sci-fi fantasy, but it still fits within the cyberpunk. You also have post-apocalyptic science fiction, which is stories and stuff that take place after the apocalypse, and you usually have some fantastic gear and mutants and whatnot. Rifts would fit into here, as would the mutant epoch. So there's lots of different sci-fi settings that you can use for your games. The book that we're going to talk about in this video uses the space opera type of science fiction. And what we're going to look at is Machinations of the Space Princess. This book has 232 pages and a copyright of 2013. It was published by Postmortem Studios. And all of the artwork in this book is in black and white. And it's pretty decent. It's sometimes a little cartoony, but it is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. All of the artwork in this book is in black and white. And it's pretty decent too, if a little cartoony sometimes. But all in all, it's pretty good. There is always something neat to look at in this book. And it goes a long way to setting a proper mood and tone for this game. To play this game, what you're going to need is, of course, a copy of this core rule book and a full set of dice. A full set of dice containing a 20-sided die, a 12-sided die, preferably two 10-sided dice for rolling both percentiles and tens, an 8-sided die, a 6-sided die, and a 4-sided die. This game is very easy to play. It's If you're familiar with Lamentations of Flame Princess or even Basic Dungeon Dragons, you're very close to knowing how to play this game. There's a few differences, and we'll get to those. But we'll start with character creation. Character creation is pretty easy in this game. You start by figuring up your attributes. And unlike other D20 games, which have six attributes, this has got seven attributes. The seven attributes in this game are charisma, comeliness, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, strength, and wisdom. And the way you figure these up is by rolling three six-sided dice and adding them together and then placing them in each attribute as you roll. That's the difficult manner. It gives you a couple of different ways to roll attributes in this game, and it's pretty neat. And then you figure up your racial traits. And the way they do this is they don't have very many stock aliens in this book, except for an appendix in the back, and we'll get to that later. But it allows you to make up your own alien races to fit how you want to play your character. They give you a bunch of different traits that you could pick for your alien and tell you how to make up a core human if you want. But the way it works is you pick three traits and add them to your character. And they'll give you certain abilities, scores, and stuff like that. Now you can pick more. But each time you take it, 
take more than three, you get a negative to your attributes. The more traits you take, the lower your attributes come. And it's very, very harsh on that penalty. You get a minus four to your attributes. And it tells you which attribute you start with. And then after that, you get to choose. So if you want to be ridiculous in the number of traits, be prepared to have a low stat character. But you get three for free. After that, you pick a class. And the classes in this game are pretty cool. You have your expert, your killer, your scion, and your scholar. Now, there, it tells you about an optional rule at one point in this book. If you want to have, like, actual magic users instead of just scions, then you can very easily bring over the magic user class and the cleric class from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, which is very cool. But those are your classes. You then figure up your skills. And each class, tell, uh, ha, there are several different skill categories, first off. And skill categories are everyman skills, size skills, combat skills, scholastic skills, and general skills. And your, the class you pick will tell you which skill categories you can pick from. And it tells you how many skill points you get at starting level with each class. And you gain so many more skill points per level. So that's pretty nifty. And then you figure up your character saving rolls, which is very easy. Each attribute has its own saving role, so there you go. Uh, Charisma has charm, cleanliness has looks, and so forth. And the way you figure, the way you use those in gameplay is when you need to make a saving roll, you roll a 20-sided die, and you got to roll equal to or less than the attribute that the saving roll is tied to in order to succeed. So that's pretty cool. And then you figure up your hit points. Each class has a number of dies that they roll for hit points per level. And that's how you figure up your hit points. And every class has psi points, which is equal to your level plus your wisdom bonus. And Sion characters, they get a bonus at character creation equal to their intelligence bonus. And that's pretty cool. The book has a lot of information in it. Uh, tells you how to figure up your equipment and everything. And that's pretty much it for character creation. The long, longest part would be looking through, picking the traits you want for your character. Other than that, it's very quick, very easy. And the book gets into... All kinds of neat stuff. Uh, combat is pretty easy. You have an attack roll for ranged attacks, and you have a separate attack roll for melee attacks. You have a defense number for your ranged attacks and a defense number for your melee attacks. And that's pretty much it. You, the book gets into all kinds of neat stuff. It's not got a lot of depth for story. It gives you a very basic story that's going on. And then you can modify and use that as you wish. Or dump it entirely and do what you want to do with it. The uh, story they give in the game is that there was a empire led by a queen. And she was assassinated. And now all the princesses from the different territories are fighting to see who gets to be queen. And there are some other uprisings for men wanting to make a male-dominated system. And other people just making as much profit as they can in the chaos that's unfolding across the galaxy. And that's their basic line. You can do what you want with it. And if you don't, you can dump it and make up your own stuff game's very good for that. It's got information on how to build spaceships. Gives you a few basic types. 
and then you build around them. It tells you how to build vehicles, weapons, and armor. Armor in this game works a little bit different than what you may be used to. Usually people are used to, they put armor on and it adds to their AC. In this, it's a little bit different. The armor doesn't necessarily add to your AC. Instead, what it does is it negates damage done to you. Meaning it will protect so much damage from you when you get hit. So that's pretty neat. And it's just got a bunch of neat nifty rules in it on how to run a game, build a character, play. You gain levels through experience. And that works just like regular D20 games. You gain so many experience points and you gain a level. Each class, though, in typical old school fashion, each class has a different number of experience points it needs for each level. So that's pretty cool. In the very back of the book, it's got a reference area that tells you, gives you some different things you can put in your game if you want. Some pre-made alien races, so you can see how that looks, or add them into your game. Pre-made animals, if you want to add those. Pre-made ships, vehicles, weapons, armor. Also, you can get a good feel on how it looks when you put this stuff together. Or you can add what they have to your game. So that's pretty nifty. You also have some charts in the back of the book. In case you're having trouble figuring out what your character looks like exactly. That'll allow you to randomly roll what your character looks like. What color their skin is. What texture their skin is. What kind of eyes they have. And I don't mean just color. I mean like compound eyes and so forth. So, there's some pretty good information back there for you, if you're not sure exactly what your character is going to look like. It's got an adventure that you can run to get started in here, and it's got a blank character sheet in the back of the book that you can photocopy and use. And that's pretty much all I got to say for Mechanations of, of the Space Princess right now. The guy that wrote this was a big fan of Lamentations of the Flame Princess and got inspiration from there and he made his game so that you could actually combine the two if you wish which is very nifty Lamentations of the Flame Princess is one of my favorite games but this brings me to three questions would I play a character in this game? absolutely I read through this game and I really liked it would I run this game? Oh, yes, I would run this game in a heartbeat. I'm just, at the moment, I'm look, actually looking for players to play. Would I recommend this game? And I'm going to have to say, yes, I would recommend it. This is a really neat game. It's very easy to play, very easy to use. Now, one thing you want to watch for, though, is it does have some harsh language in it. So, if you're adverse to swearing, then you'll want to be cautious of that. But otherwise, I enjoyed it, reading through the book, and look forward to playing it. So thank you for taking a look at Mechanations of the Space Princess with me. And hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye.